There's a new documentary out about Bay Area basketball star Jeremy Lin. It takes us back to that symbolic game in 2012 when Jeremy landed a stunning 38 points against the Lakers at Madison Square Garden. Shots that inspired a nationwide movement and galvanized Asian Americans everywhere. Joining me now to talk more about this film, 38 at the Garden, our director Frank Chi and producer Samir Hernandez. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. So, you know, I think first off, congratulations are in order. Your work is on the Oscar shortlist for best documentary short film. Um, you know, walk us through just how does that feel, first of all, and also what inspired you to do this film? So it's so humbling that the Academy has recognized us so far. And I think for us, you know, the biggest thing that drives us to make a movie like that is dreams need examples, right? I think Jeremy's story is so much bigger than a basketball story, right? If I were to describe 30 at the Garden without any basketball whatsoever, I would say part one is about stereotypes. Mm. Part two is about what happens when someone shatters those stereotypes on the world stage. And part three is about today when those stereotypes have been weaponized. And when they're weaponized, they turn into anti-Asian violence, mm. right? And that is at the crux of why we made this movie. You know, one of the things that really struck us once it came out was we realized there's so many kids who are watching it. I'm not exactly sure that was our target audience when we first set out to make this movie, but the reason why that is is what I said earlier, right? Dreams need examples. And if you're a kid right now, especially if you feel different, especially if you're Asian American, you're going to school today, you're double masked, you're afraid to be called Kung Flu. Mm -hmm. You need to see somebody that tells you that anything is possible. And Jeremy's story is that to us. Mm, absolutely. And Samir, what was the creative process like for you being involved with this? Oh, this is this is literally started from an idea and a deck that Frank that Frank and uh, our other producer uh, Trayvon brought to me, and with that it was you know it was tasked with getting Jeremy involved, and that was literally a a a story within itself because be having him you know convincing him to be able to continue to tell the story and then tell the impact that Linsanity had ten years later and all the people that he inspired. Um, was one that was that was just it was magical and and being able to have him and Patricia's son his CEO be able to get involved and say hey we'll sit and we'll take part was something that was amazing and then after that it was literally finding the right people that have the right point of views on these issues to be able to talk right so Lisa Ling who's our executive yeah. producer uh, Hassan Minaj you know who who gives great commentary as well as you know Jenny Yang and his teammates it it, it literally was. Uh, a beautiful process to bring together and, and it showed the breadth and the impact that Jeremy's very special moment had on, you know, on community, on, on the world on, as a whole. Yeah, and speaking of moments, right, you've spoken before in interviews about the importance of highlighting impossible moments. Mm -hmm. So what are your save, some of your favorite impossible moments uh, that are in the film? So the original idea of the impossible moment actually comes from a conversation about Obama. Right? Mm. The original impossible moment is when society tells a group of people you can't do something and then somebody comes, no, comes out of nowhere and shatters it. Right? And I was having that conversation with our other producer, Trayvon, and he was like, what other moments feel like that? I was like, the only one, the only one to me as an Asian American is Lynn Sanity. Mm. And I said, the two most magical moments of my life, the first is the night Obama was elected president, the second is the night Jeremy dropped 38 at the garden. And I remember Trayvon looked at me, he was like, 30 at the garden, that's a movie, mm -hmm. right? Mm. And that's the birth of, of this idea, right? It was to really capture this impossible moment that very rarely do we have something that has such a societal impact that is not on his face about society, right? It's about a, a game, yeah. right? But I think that's the power of sports and, and we really, I think, showed that in this movie. Mm. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Samir? A uh, favorite moment? Yeah. I, I, the wave off. The way yes. Oh, yeah. is, is yes. the one. The Raptors, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it speaks so much to, you know, beyond that moment, right? And we have so many people. We actually have, someone actually got the wave off tattooed on them. It meant that much. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. because so many times, you know, people play small, yeah. you know, and they don't really step up to the moment and really grab the moment. And so being able to say, hey, let, let's, other people say what you can't do, what you shouldn't do, uh, what you're not supposed to be doing. It, it becomes us as dreamers and us as doers to be able to wave them off 
and live out our dream and take that big shot in our own lives. And last question here for you guys. You know, Jeremy says in the documentary that what's one of the toughest times to be Asian American, um, if you think about where we were at that point, at the height of insanity and where we are now um, with, you know, with the pandemic, seeing that rise in anti-Asian violence. Um, you know, what are your thoughts to that? And what do you think needs to change here? You know, the way we've always framed having this conversation and why we thought Linsanity was a great vehicle to have this conversation was because so all of a sudden, the stereotypes that I grew up with, that you grew up with, in the past couple of years have been weaponized against people, right? You know, I live in New York. If I, if I take the subway home, I never used to just stand in the middle of the station. I do that now, right? Because it's a little more dangerous to have this face in this country, mm. right? And when we talk about stereotypes as, when we talk about, you know, anti-Asian violence as the weaponization of stereotypes, like there's a light bulb that goes off in folks' heads and people all of a sudden really do understand why things have happened the past couple of years the way they have. So I hope we continue to have that conversation and uh, Linsanity has been a great vehicle for us to do that. All right. Thank you so much, Frank Samir, for your time and for joining us uh, this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank you for Thank having you. us. All right. You can watch uh, their Oscar shortlisted film, 38 at the Garden, out now on HBO Max. We'll be right back.